Hello folks, in this video I'm going to explain how to code buttons in Pygame. I do have an existing video where I've shown how to create them from scratch, but this one is a little bit simpler to set up and it's just going to allow you to put the buttons into your game a lot quicker. So as a little demo here, I've got a couple of buttons on the screen and when I click on one of them, it shows down here what the action for that button is. So it's quite straightforward and I'm going to go into the code just now. Now I've pre-populated some of the basic code for just a Pygame game loop. When I run this, nothing actually happens, so I can show it here. It just gives me a, dis a blank display window, but I'll explain what the code does. So first of all, I import Pygame, and then I define my game window parameters. So I've got my screen height and the screen width, so that's just how big that window is going to be. Then I create a game window. So the screen variable is that game window that you just saw, and it's done using this pygame.display.set underscore mode function. I feed in the screen width and screen height, and that tells it how big it's going to be. And then I just give it a little caption so it's not called a Pygame window. Then this is my main game loop here. So I set a starting variable, which is run, I set that to true, and this while loop essentially just continues running as long as that variable stays true. Within the loop, I only have one thing, and that's the event handler. The event handler is looking for a single event at the moment, which is pygame.quit. So whenever this X button is clicked in the top right of the game window, this condition is met and the run variable becomes false, which means that the while loop is exited. When that happens, pygame.quit is run just to finish the code. And the last thing within the loop is this pygame.display.update. And this just updates the game window at each iteration of the code. So that's just the basics. But again, like I showed, if I run this, nothing actually happens. So I need to start coding in the buttons. Now, before I can do anything, I need to load in those images first of all. So I'll start by loading in my images. Uh, load button images. So the first one was start image. So start underscore img equals pygame.image.load. And I'm going to give it the file name here. So it's start underscore btn.png. And just at the end, dot convert underscore alpha. Now, this bit here is important. This is just the file name and the location of the image. Now, in my case, my code is right here and the images are in the same folder. So I can just call the name of the file, which is this one here. If you have these images in a different folder, you need to make sure that you put the correct address of it in here, the full directory. So if it's in an image folder, you'll need to say image, uh, image forward slash the start button. If you're getting errors such as image not found or file not found, then it's likely because of this. So that's the start image loaded in. I can do the same for the exit image. So I just change this code here and change the name of the button file. So that's going to load them in, but of course I'm not actually creating the buttons yet, so nothing is going to be displaying on the screen. What I want to do is create these buttons as a class. So I'll create my button class here. I'll say button class class is going to be just called button and within that I need my constructor so I'll define the init method and it takes self and then it's going to take the x and the y coordinate so I know where to put the button on the screen and then lastly the image so the image is just which image I want to display on that particular button because these buttons are going to be completely independent of each other so first of all I can start assigning these variables I can say self.image equals image so that's the image that's being loaded in then I can create a rectangle from that image so self.rect equals self.image.get underscore rect to get a rectangle from it and then I can use those x and y coordinates to determine where I want the rectangle and the image to be so I'll set the rectangles top left variable to x and y so that's it, that creates the button instance, but it's not going to put it onto the screen because there's no draw method. So that's what I need to create here. I'll create a draw method after this. That doesn't take any arguments, so I just put self in there. And all I wanted to do is draw button on screen. So I can say screen dot blit, and what I'm blitting here is the image, so self.image, and the location for that image is going to be my rectangles x coordinate and my rectangles y coordinate so that's kind of starting to come together i've got my basics of this class set up now i can create button instances so we'll say my start underscore button equals an instance of the button class and that means that i need to give it these arguments here so you ignore self and you say x y and image so when i'm creating the start button what x and y coordinates do i want to give it 
I'll say 100 for X, 200 for Y, and the image that I want to use is the one I've previously loaded, which is start image. So this will create an instance of one button. Now I can do the exact same thing and create another instance, which is going to be my exit button. So I change the X coordinate because I want to shift this over to a little bit to the right. So it'll be 450 by 200, and then the image is the exit image. Now if I run this again, you notice nothing's actually changed. The reason for that is I have created the instances, but I'm not calling the draw method on them. So I can do that within the main game loop. Now, first of all, I want to get rid of that blank background. So we'll say screen.fill. And in here, I'm just going to put a color. Uh, the color that I used in that demo was this pastel blue here. So run this again, and you can see now the game window has gone this pastel blue background. And now I can draw those uh, buttons onto the screen. So I can say start underscore button, which is the instance, dot draw, which is the method that I've created for it. And that's automatically going to call the code within this section. Now I can do the exact same thing for exit underscore button dot draw. Now notice I don't need to put anything into this draw method. I don't need to give it coordinates or anything like that because the instance already has that. So each of these buttons already has this information contained within it. I run this again. And now you can see I've got these two buttons side by side. I can't click on them, nothing really happens, uh, but it is now coming up and starting to work. Next thing I want to do is be able to scale these up and down because you may think that they're a bit too big for the screen. So scaling, I'm also going to do within the constructor. I will add an extra argument here, which is going to be called scale. And now before I assign the image that I load in to the self.image variable, I can scale it up at the same time. Before I can scale something, I need to know how big it is to start with. So I need to know the width and height of the original image. So I say image.get underscore width. That tells me how wide it is. Height equals image.get underscore height. And using these, I can now scale it within this section. So rather than equating it directly to the image, I can equate it to the scaled version. I say pygame.transform.scale. What am I scaling? I'm scaling that image that I've just loaded in. And then I need to give it a, a width and a height. So first of all, the width is going to be the original width multiplied by the scale. So in here, remember, I need to add in an integer or convert it to an integer. Otherwise, I could get a, a float value and Pygame one like that. So the integer value of width multiplied by scale, that's the x, or rather, that's the width. And then I think I might be adding too many parentheses here. Int height times scale. So we'll see, this may throw an error. So this first parenthesis is for that. Then this one is, no, okay, I think that is correct. And that's gonna load my image and everything else is gonna be exactly the same. But now I have this extra argument here. I need to make sure that when I create instances, I feed that in. Otherwise, I run this and I get an error because the argument numbers don't line up. There's four needed and I'm only giving it three. So I add in the scale. So let's say 0 0.5, let's half of half these images. Run this again. And now you can see the buttons have gone quite small got tiny little buttons here. So the scaling is working pretty well. Uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.5 is a bit too small, so let's make them 0.8 and see how that looks. And I think that's a bit better now. Okay, so the buttons are now customizable. They're coming up on the screen as I want them. Now I can start looking for clicking. Now this is also going to be done within the class itself. So this is the good thing about this. All of the code is going to be handled within the button class. Now, I'll make a little bit of room within this draw method because this is where I'm going to be looking for mouse over events. So before I can look at whether I've clicked the button, first of all, I want to know where the mouse cursor actually is. So let's say get mouse position. So I'll save that in a variable. Pause equals pygame dot mouse dot get underscore pause. And in fact, let's just print this out. So before I do anything else, let's just print this pause and oops. Oh, of course, I went off to my other screen. Run this again, and you can see as I move this around, it's not gonna work, it's giving me zeros because I can't move my mouse onto my other screen here. There we go, that's better. Okay, so I've got my game window here, and you can see as I move around on the display window, the X and Y coordinates of the mouse are changing with it. So I start off with near enough zero, zero in the top left, and I can move across to the overall screen width and height. So I've got the position of the mouse. Well, next I wanna know whether the mouse is over one of the buttons. So I can add in, I'll add a comment to say, check mouse over and clicked conditions. So first of all, 
is the mouse over one of the buttons? Well, the button has a rectangle and the rectangle is going to have some collision functions within it. So I can just say if self.rect uh, and I look for a collision here. Now you can look for collision with other rectangles uh, and other things like that, but you can also look for collision with a point. I can say self.rect.collide point and the point that I want to look for collision with is the position of the mouse. So basically this section is asking, is the mouse or the mouse cursor colliding with the rectangle of that uh, button? And if it is, well, let's just do a test. Print hover. So it's not clicking yet. I just want to know that I'm covering over one of the buttons. Bring this over again. And as soon as I move over the button, you can see it's printing out hover in the bottom left. So that part is working correctly. Now I can start looking for clicks. So if I'm actually hovering over the mouse, oh, sorry, over the button, I can now look for mouse clicks as well. If pygame.mouse.get underscore pressed. Now this argument has uh, different, or it returns, uh, I believe it's either a list or a tuple, but I can access different um, buttons from it using the indices. So if I say zero in here, that's going to give me the left mouse button. Uh, if I put one, then I think that's the middle mouse button and two is a right click. So I'm looking for a left click, so I stick with a zero. So if the left mouse button has been clicked, then for now, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna print clicked or cl yeah, clicked. Run this again, bring this over. So now, oh, what have I done? Um, if pygame.mouse, I forgot to put a full stop in there. Try that again, move over. So nothing's happening when I hover because I got rid of that code. But when I click, you can see straight away it's popping up with clicked. The problem is though, it's, um, although I'm only clicking it for a second, it's registering it a whole bunch of times. I don't really want that. I only want it to register once. You don't want these buttons. If this is like an up or down, for example, you don't want it to just fly off the chart. So you want a way of being able to control how many times you can click, or rather you want a trigger. So as soon as you've clicked once, you have to release the mouse before you can click again. And for that, I'm just gonna add an extra variable. So up in my constructor, the init method, I will add a new variable called clicked. So I'll say self.clicked equals false. It's gonna start off, each button is not clicked. So each button is gonna start off with an unclicked uh, state. And then in here, if I click on the mouse button, well, rather than printing anything, I just want to change that variable. So self.clicked, whoops, now becomes true. But of course, I only want to be able to click when that variable is false. So I add an, an and statement here and say self.clicked equals false. So let's run this again and bring this over. If I click on one of these, uh, oops, I've forgotten to add, of course, I need to still keep that in. Print clicked. Run that again. So if I click this now, it's coming up as clicked, but I can't click it again. I can click the other one once, but then I can't click that again. The reason for that is, although I'm setting this to true once, I'm never setting it back to false. So this condition can only be met once. So what I actually need is an additional check here. So I say if pygame.mouse.get underscore pressed zero is equal to zero, so the mouse button is not clicked, then I reset that clicked variable, that trigger, back to false. So I'll run this again. So now when I click on one of the buttons, you can see it comes up as clicked, but I can keep clicking it over and over again. So I know that the trigger is now working correctly. But the problem now is that all these are doing are registering a click and then printing within them. So all the buttons at the moment do the exact same thing. Whereas I want to be able to differentiate between them. So rather than having the functionality within the draw method, I actually want to be able to return this into my main game loop where I can then have the buttons do different things. So to do that, I can add in an additional variable here. So within my draw method, I'll add a variable called action. I'll set this variable to start with to false. Now this isn't uh, an instance variable, so I don't need self dot at the start of it. It's just a variable that's within this draw method. And now down here, rather than saying print clicked, I just set the action variable to true. And lastly, I can now return this action variable out of this method. So right at the bottom here, I can add a return, return action. So now if we go down to the main game loop, now that this is returning something, it means that when I run the draw method, I can take something back from it. 
So now this is going to return either a true or a false. So I can actually look for an if statement here. I can say if start button dot draw, which is essentially the same as saying if it equals to true. So if that's returning a true for the action, which means that the button's been clicked, then we can do something. Uh, but just to simplify the code, I'm going to get rid of this and it's going to mean the exact same thing. So now I can put those print statements here instead. So here I can say, well, this is the start button clicked, so print start and the same for the exit button, print exit. Now, if I run this again, I'll have both of my buttons here, and when I click on one of them, it actually displays what's going on from that particular button. So now they're completely independent of each other, and I'll be able to create as many of these as I want, position them where they want, and they will all run in the same way. I can even add functionality to it. So for example, this exit button, well, if I want that to be used as an actual exit button, I can add a change here to say that the run variable is set to false. Remember, this is the variable that controls whether this while loop is running. So if clicking the exit button sets that to false, then that should exit the game. If I come up here, click the exit button, it closes down. So this is how you would be able to handle functions from your buttons. So now this is nearly there, but I don't really want to have all of this code here for the button class within the main game loop. So if this is your actual game, you just want to try and minimize it as much as you can. So what I want to do instead is move this code into a separate uh, Pygame file of its own. So I'll copy this out of here, delete it, and move it to this other file that I had called button.py. So the moment it's empty, I'll paste all of that into it. And now this is going to be its own uh, class and its own file. Now, of course, because this is using some Pygame functions here, I need to make sure that I import the Pygame module for it. So import Pygame. Uh, and now within this main code, I can now import that file as a module. So I can import button. Now this only works because they are both in the same folder. So it's going to be able to find that button.py file uh, in the same folder as the main code and load it in for me. Uh, there are a couple of little tweaks that I have to make to the code now. Because I'm loading this in, I can't just call the button class because this button class doesn't exist in the main code. It exists within this module. So I need to call that first. I need to say button dot button. So this is saying, first of all, look in that button module, which is the button file here, and then take the button class out of it. So notice the capital B and the small b. So this is the file name. This is the class name. So that's going to load them in and create instances of it. Uh, there's one more thing that I need to change though. If we come back into the button class, there's a function within the draw method, which is screen.blit. So this was fine within the main game loop because there was a screen variable, but this file here doesn't have a screen variable. So I actually need to feed another argument into the draw method, and this is going to be my surface. So now rather than calling it screen, I'm gonna change that to surface, save this, and when I come into my draw method in the game loop, I just need to make sure that I specify the surface. And the surface in my case is screen. So that should be it now. If I run this again, I get the same code, the same buttons, and I'm able to click on them. I get the exact same functionality as before. But now, all of that code is gone. All of that code is in a separate file. So this means that you can pretty much just, it becomes modular. You can put this into any of your other projects, simply import the button uh, module, and then from there, you can load images, create instances of it, and create buttons from that instance and draw them on. So you wouldn't need to really recode any of this afterwards. Now, I'll upload all this code onto GitHub so you can check that in the video description. But I hope this was useful, and thanks for watching.